Hi everybody. I uh, wanted to show you the, the finish that I got on the outside of this plate. Um, aside from a quick buzz with the dual action sander that I described and demonstrated a little while ago, everything has been done by hand. Um, and the DA sander, the power sander, I uh, basically used just to highlight the uh, bumps and high spots on the plate. Um, makes it easier to see. And then I went after the um, went after the high spots with a scraper, and finished up with the two hand sanding pads that I showed you last time. So we have now a, a really nice form, a, a, a new model that that uh, is a little bit flatter back here than I've been building, and I'm hoping to get a little bit more power and base from this uh, reduced curve back here. Um, and still have quite a lot of loft, that is height, um, and, uh, you know, pretty dramatic curves here in the center of the guitar. And um, I'm anxious to turn, turn this over and carve the inside and see what I can do with this. So uh, what, what I've done off camera is separate the top from the workboard by splitting the the paper that was uh, holding them together. I used yellow glue for this, and uh, if I were to do this this way again, I probably would have watered down the glue, um, or maybe used paper that was a little bit thicker and happier to split. You can see this is quite a thin piece of craft paper, and uh, I did actually struggle a little bit, full disclosure with getting this off, but no damage, everything's fine. And we'll no longer need this part uh, to, to, as a work board. All right, now I'm gonna pause for a minute, change the lighting and show you what comes next. Okay, so those of you who have seen the earlier demonstration of the uh, foam molding that I, I showed you, we'll know what's coming up next. So um, this is the, the uh, three millimeter or eighth inch piece that we cut out um, to retain the guitar while it's being worked on upside down. And then we will put a piece of uh, vinyl on top. And then this is the surround that we got when we originally sawed all this stuff out in a stack. And I have prepared this last piece with a bunch of uh, shallow saw kerfs um, to relieve the pressure of the expanding foam. So this is going to go here. And then there's some clamping calls that go here and the whole thing slides into this clamp that I built for this job and we'll clamp it down. All right. So let's, let's go ahead and load it up and play mad scientist and see what happens. Of course, this is, I'm not sure exactly how this is going to go, <laughs> but, but I only get to do this once. So we'll see. All right. So here we have these parts will 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 stay together, and um, I've measured out uh, what I'm hoping is the correct amount of this pourable urethane foam that seemed to work well in the test we did on the glass plate. Stuff is a little tricky. It's uh, kind of a mess and you don't have a lot of time. So we're going to do this.
I uh, sure hope that's enough. <laughs> well, we're going to watch it, see what happens. If it isn't, we'll just have to try it again. Hmm. I don't know. Doesn't look like it's working, does it? They said 75 to 85 Fahrenheit, it's 74.3. So we would expect a little bit more movement than this, I think. But it does say that you can you can mix up more and throw it on top without a problem, which I think is what we're going to have to do. Well, it is rising up, but we sure don't have enough, do we? Okay, it's a one-to-one -one mix, as you can see. Well, can we get a vote? Does anybody think I should mix up more? What do you think?
<laughs> Mad Scientist Department. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got a big bend in this piece of cherry. <laughs> it looks pretty good. It's uh maybe about two millimeters from closing completely, but it looks reasonably um, even around and 
you can see it started to get it started to kick pretty hard. Anyway, I think we'll get the part we want. And uh, <laughs> we'll talk about it later when it gets unclamped. <laughs> wow, Mad Scientist Day. Thanks.